Malware comes in a lot of different shapes and sizes. As you might know, some of my favorite is deobfuscating layers of nested stages of scripting languages, native, inherent, and always available and always installed default languages that the target operating system, like Microsoft Windows, might willingly execute and run. Stuff like JScript, stuff like PowerShell or Batch in the Windows command line, even Visual Basic Script or MSHTA in the HTML application application language. There's so much cool, fun stuff, and it's been a little while since we got a chance to deobfuscate some strange shenanigans and malicious code. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to start to play with one of my favorite languages to tinker with, Visual Basic Script. Let's get to it. Before we dive into the video, here is a quick note from today's sponsor. Developers are constantly changing the digital landscape, but building secure software isn't always easy especially in growing applications worked on across massive teams. Companies end up with mountains of code, and they have to make a choice. Stay competitive or stay secure. But with Sneak, you don't have to choose. Sneak helps bake security into the software development lifecycle. Sneak helps you scale and streamline by automatically scanning your code, dependencies, containers, and configuration files, finding and fixing vulnerabilities in real time. And it is super easy to use. You can sign up for free with my link below, import your repositories, and there, Sneak just finds your vulnerabilities. You can fix all these issues with just a single click. Sneak automatically opens a fixing pull request so you can just merge them into your repository and move on. And it fits seamlessly into all of your existing tools. IDEs, the command line, CICD pipelines, cloud infrastructure, and more. Millions of developers love Sneak. And you can see for yourself. Get started for free with my link below and develop fast and stay secure with Sneak. Okay, so I am inside of my Remnux virtual machine. Remnux being the reverse engineering malware and analysis Linux distribution. And I have hit control alt T on my keyboard to open up a command line terminal. I have a directory called VB script. And in this directory, I have a file called server tilde one dot VBS. Now this is a file that was found added as a persistence mechanism on the target victim computer. It was added into their startup folder. So one of the applications and one of the programs that would just kick off as the machine booted up or logged in via user, something that would just automatically go ahead and run this code. Now again, being a Visual Basic script, it is something that Windows will just naturally execute with its own interpreter. It has some interesting code here, however, I'm noticing a pattern, and you probably are just as well. There is a significant amount of commented blocks here that are trying to maybe impersonate PHP, I don't really know, it just seemingly has these in square braces here, and then random message boxes with numbers that just seem to be getting in the way of the code that we might actually want to read here. So the first order of business is trying to remove these. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can finagle some regular expressions to be able to cut up these blocks, but you know I failed at this before in the very first malware analysis video that I put together, so let me uh, have some time to figure this out. I'm gonna hit Control F on my key Keyboard, so I could go ahead and search for specific things and that's the that control find functionality and I'm going to use the opening square braces and closing square braces with PHP present and then a dot slash excuse me a dot star to glob everything following I believe I can use backslash n to get a new line but I'm going to need to try and multiply that out across multiple things that might be across multiple lines. And it looks like that worked for me, but I'd want to have a terminator on another backslash, or excuse me, a, a single quote here. I might've been using the wrong wording that entire time. I'll use the backslashes to escape the ending of the PHP portion. Now, this is going to be a greedy regular expression and it's going to capture literally everything following you know the first occurrence here. So this probably won't work all that well for me. I wanna try and make this lazy. So I believe I can add a question mark following the plus sign, plus being one or more multiplying the previous group that it detected. And the uh, asterisk here, that star, is already gonna be collecting at least zero or more of the previous thing. So I believe I have selected all of those blocks now. And if I hit Control Alt, uh, actually, I think it's control H that will allow me to find and replace. So I have this regular expressions here already created, but I am going to replace this with control alt enter. So I've replaced it with nothing. And now just like that, all of those have been removed. 
Okay, uh, I have a couple extra blank lines now though, so I do not like that. I'm gonna look with another regular expression to find the start of a line that has a new line character just following it and nothing else. And if I control alt enter to replace all of those, now I have a little bit at least easier to read syntax. Okay. With that, we can start to dive into this code here. We have the usual prelude for some uh, Visual Basic script code on error resume next. So we just ignore any issues that come through here. And then we go ahead and use the set keyword to set <laughs> AAAAAAAAAA. <laughs> uh, and that's going to end up being the return value of this get object function call. Now it does some weird thing here by concatenating, and in Visual Basic Script, the ampersand is a concatenate operator, with chrw being a function call to get, you know, the character representation of a number. And what that means is it's going to do an ASCII table lookup to find, okay, what actual printable character could be represented in the ASCII table with numbers like zero to 255, or, or hey, I might have those bounds wrong, inclusive, exclusive, whatever. But this is something that sure, we could try to figure out by going through here one by one, exploring each and every single one of these. But I like to try and let the language deobfuscate itself, just naturally unravel. And that's a technique I'm sure you've seen me use through a ton of these videos, but this is Visual Basic Script which will not run on my Linux operating system that I'm in right now. Remnux as a distribution and as Linux just isn't gonna know how to execute and interpret Visual Basic Script. So I need to hop over to Windows. So I am gonna open up my Flare Virtual Machine as another, hey, uh, malware sandbox that I might be able to work with. I believe this is FireEyes Labs, you know, I don't know, analysis and reverse engineering. I'm totally getting the acronym wrong here, but I should go ahead and be able to download a tool that I wanna use called VBS Edit. This is just an interpreter. It's just another editor for Visual Basic Script. And that's one that I tend to really like because it gives me a little bit of a playground to work with Visual Basic Script. If you haven't used this before, something that I recommend, I think I might've showcased it in other videos, but I'll go ahead and get this installed and we'll get right back to it. Okay, now VBS Edit is present here on my desktop, so I can open that up. It is going to be asking for a license key or just say some actual registered saying that you bought this software. However, you can just kind of hit evaluate and let it cruise through. Now, I should be able to just go ahead and paste this line in, and that text is a little small. Uh, let me make this all bigger here for you. Okay, now that should be a little bit easier to read. I am gonna go ahead and save this as a file that I can work with. Uh, this is just all temporary, so we'll throw it in my uh, desktop and we'll call it like oh, playground.vbs or whatever. Now get object is gonna actually basically return an object, but I kind of just wanna know what the result of this whole string is after it's concatenated and manipulated and done whatever it does here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those silly parentheses at the beginning and end of it. And I'm gonna see if I can use something like wscript.echo to be able to just display this out. wscript.echo is basically the console.log. Uh, it allows me to really just output this to the screen. Uh, we can just print it out into standard output. And you could use something like message box to just, I don't know, display that out. And I might have that syntax wrong. I kind of need to remind myself here. But wscript.echo allows you to run this with something like C script. So if I open up the command prompt using commander here as part of Flare, if I zoom in, if I go ahead and get to my desktop, I should be able to run C script on my playground. Now, fingers crossed, if I haven't screwed this up already, ooh, I've got this thing. I've got the output here following, you know, the banner from Microsoft. A E Z R T ing colon backslash backslash root cvbnc mvnn what is that how is that useful for me at all this looks like you know a potential like sim namespace or something for wmi i believe i might have that vernacular wrong but that is, is something within windows so let's just swipe that and go put that into our script here replacing what that originally would have been uh, we'll put that back in quotes and we'll do this just as well for, you know, our next variable, b, 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 b. <laughs> I'm, I'm still a little bit puzzled as to how this is coming together and actually returning a value that this might be able to work with as an object. Does that work? Let me try to just run that on its own. I, I have, did I miss some operations there? 
I'm expecting this to be root sim management, which looks like it's partially there, but not fully. Are they doing some shenanigans? Let me try and play with this. I'm going to comment this line out with that single quote. And let me grab that syntax again. If I paste this in, am I setting this AA object to be sim management? How about I try and run this? No, it whines. What is the invalid syntax here? Is that just me not doing this correctly? Let's put this in a regular script. On error, resume, next. Set value, get object should be just fine. Maybe that's only something that W script can do. Oh no, that, wait, wait. The on error resume next is probably not letting me do that. I think that's gonna error. I think that is perfect, purposefully failing. So that won't happen? Maybe. Let's go back to the code. That on error resume next is just going to let this thing fail because it's not going to get an actual object out of this. This is garbage nonsense. What is BBBBB going to do? Let's go ahead and grab this to go ahead and deobfuscate it. We'll grab that other portion here and see what they actually try to run. What this exec query might come back with. Pasting that in, let's use our wscript.echo one more time. Go back to commander, try and run that. No, wrong number of arguments to pass to chrw? That's fine though. It only takes one. Is there a comma in here anywhere? Let me control F for a comma. Oh, there is one, but that's in mid, which is another function. None of these go to chrw. Maybe that needs to be wrapped in parentheses. It's just weird stuff in VB scripts. There we go. There's something. This looks like it's trying to refer to process. Looks like it's trying to pull win32 process. But again, that's garbage. That would fail. Okay, let's go back. I guess I can grab this code. And it gets... 48 as another argument to it? Is that even a thing that you can do to exec query? Or am I doing this all wrong? Let me kind of get a quick reset. Maybe just for a sanity check, I kind of want to try and run this with message box and maybe in like W script. Let me try and W script playground. No, that still spits out the actual message here. And even if I were to use a message box, it does the exact same thing. So that's never going to return a result for me. I have a hunch these would error. Do they even use these variables? No, this is the only location that even those variables are, are used. However, this tries to loop through all the processes. It defines a new variable with dim to denote, hey, I'm creating something new here. And then we do a for each and all the results that would come through Win32 process class. And if that process name is equal to something here, then more things happen. Let's try and add some white space and see how we might be able to make sense of this. If statements in Visual Basic Script will end via an end if, for loops will continue to iterate through a next, and then we have another end if that matches the one above. I'll get these tabs correct here. And then we do some other weird stuff. But let's see where this goes. We're looping through every process that we retrieve from that Win32 sim class or, you know, WMI thing. Uh, and then we check if the name is equal to this thing and then it will do something. So let's go, go ahead and deobfuscate that. We'll slap that right back into Visual Basic Script, the little editor here with WScript Echo. Let's try and run that. I'll use C script again, uh, and it does not like the fact that I have not wrapped that in parentheses, so let me slap that again there. And it's checking if the value is equal to wscript.exe. Interesting. I was using C script to test that, so it's not just detecting it based off of it's literally the string manipulation of checking is this going to be wscript.exe. If it is, then we define d, 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 d with all of this. Seemingly hex values, just way, way far out to the right here. 
And we go ahead and define that and then use e, 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 presumably with a function f, 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 which is defined down here. Okay, so that is code that we'll get to, but let me kind of keep cruising and see where we go with this. G, 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 g is going to end up reading another object that we could try and deobfuscate here. Slap that in, and you know the drill here. Super simple, super easy. Slap it all together. Run this. That looks a little bit closer. Win management Q colon root. Uh, still not an actual thing though. It, that will error. That's so odd to me. Well, okay, that's what it deobfuscates to. So let's check out this next variable, H, 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 H. Another exec query where they're trying to, again, do something odd with a 48 argument there. Let's use that. Here we go select from win32 process. Okay, so that's probably the query that it's still trying to end up rolling. Odd that it does that inside of another loop here. I'm not getting this wrong, am I? This is like plaguing me with anxiety and self-doubt. <laughs> we loop through each of those and for every process yet again, we check this, okay, if that matches a name, deobfuscate that nice and easy, run that, wscript.exe. Yet again, what is happening? If it is wscript.exe, then go ahead and execute what you determined from fffff of dddddd. Presumably this is gonna be a payload. Like this must be hex bytes for something. I don't know what mid is gonna end up returning. I believe it's just getting some portion here. We could just run that. I don't know why that's just slapped in as an extra random command to run, but let's see what that does. Uh, does not like that. Oh, parentheses are getting in the way. What are you worried about, man? Just use, call the function. How about that? It does nothing. Mid would only retrieve a length, right? It. it we just saw those arguments kind of given to us as we hovered over it in VBS edit. So that does nothing. It literally returns zero characters from this and gives me an empty string. Useless. This one starts at nine. However, this is 10 characters long. So it gives me the letter E. If E is equal to mid of this thing, character five as a starting length going to eight, that does nothing. This is all just a fraud. Oh, hang on. I, I grabbed the wrong thing. Let me grab this. Run that. Please, come back. Run. Act bogs. Couldn't have said it better myself. Except I did. Because I'm the only one that said it. And this is, again, tanker. That's useless. You, you don't even do anything with these values. It's just garbage. Okay. FFFFF is the only thing that we end up needing to work with. This is going to end up defining a return value because in Visual Basic Script, the name of the function, after you set that to a variable, is what that function returns. This is clearly going to end up just cutting up and running and like building out blocks or, or another layer of Visual Basic Script to spit out and execute here. So if some way, somehow, this were to succeed if my interpretation of those original obfuscated strings was wrong, FFFFF would deobfuscate and end up executing, running the next layer of DDDDDDD. To follow? Does that make sense? <laughs> Let me just slap this in. Now we got our function here working for us. And let's go grab our good friend DDDDDDD. What you got for me? Let's paste this in here. Oh, VBS said it just crash. It did. <laughs> okay, okay. I didn't. I didn't know we were gonna give up so easy. Oh, let's go to the desktop. Open up my playground again. Do you not like a string that long? You don't. Shoot. <gasps> I don't even have to use VBS edit. You know what? Like, let's just use notepad plus plus. We have notepad plus plus. Now dddddd is all defined. We don't need that temporary file. We'll use fffff on dddd 
And let's go ahead and wscript.echo FFFFFF of DDDDDD. This video is going to suck. You guys must hate listening to me. I'm sorry. All right. wscript.exe on our playground.vbs and theory. Oh, God. I ran that in wscript. <laughs> I should have used cscript. Playground.vbs. That looks like something. It really does. Let me redirect that out to next.vbs. I guess I named the previous file next, so that probably doesn't work all that well. But this has stuff to it. Uh, despite the output of the previous thing, this looks like something we could work with. Let me bring this back into Sublime Text so we have a little bit better display here. We'll call that next.vbs. And it's this. So this ends up yet again executing it. Oh, there's two functions here. All right, so let's clean this up. We have another do loop. And execute global is what's going to end up running. But this is the thing that runs, which calls that based off of this. Yeah. And it cuts it up, does whatever deobfuscation things that it wants to, and then ultimately will end up running it while it's not a BLEN. So basically, execute global is going to be the next malicious, nefarious thing. Um, so maybe rather than running execute global, we can go ahead and just wscript.echo what that ends up being spat out to be. So we could try and run this. Granted, I, there are non-printable characters up here, and that worries me. I feel like I've broken something. There's no real way to be able to retrieve or get that easily um, working in the text copies that I'm using here. So let's... Hmm... Do you think it'll work? Like, it, would it work? I don't know. Let's do it in the Flare VM so we can use execute global, but rather than actually using execute global, let's use our W script echo. So it will not execute this next stage of the payload, but it'll unravel it for us. Hopefully, theoretically. Let's try to W script our next VBS. Nope, oh, it didn't like it. Mm, crap. How are we going to pull that data out? We can't get in the way of execute global. Can you redefine functions in Visual Basic Script? Like letting the first payload execute is no go. That's no good, right? We're just detonating this malware on ourselves. Let's make another playground. Or, er, yeah, let's just... Save this as an experiment. Dot VBS, please. Hello. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. Um, let's do a function. Let's create our own function. I believe you can end function just like that. We'll call it execute global. But all we'll do is wscript.echo. So I could do a little please subscribe, right? Now when I execute global wscript.echo Oh, nested things. Does that work? You should never see this. It's inside of uh, double quotes already, so fingers crossed. Let's try to C script this time, actually run the right thing on our experiment. VBS. Did you not save it? You jerk. I hate you, Notepad++. That's why I never use you. Can I just save it as all? Yeah, all types. Let's go ahead and delete our experiment.vb, your useless son of a S. Because it was missing the S. C script, experiment.vbs, please. Wrong number of arguments of invalid property execute global. Uh, because it knows that it takes no argument. Anything. 
But that does prove to us that we can overwrite that variable. So now, or overwrite the function. We could, knowing what the next stage does, probably get around it, you think? Because the second stage payload will end up running execute global to actually detonate it. But in the first stage where we're experimenting with this, we could probably nerf that out. As an experiment, let's just run our mal uh, our execute global with with please subscribe rather than actually showing us the payload um i'm going to disconnect this from internet in case i'm <laughs> in case i'm horribly wrong okay so now we want to be running our playground c script playground <gasps> wait a second this is our first thing it just ec it just echoed it. It didn't it didn't go ahead and execute it. We need to still run execute, correct? Because it, it didn't even run. Please subscribe. Because all we did was echo that out. We didn't execute it. We need to execute this. Now to note that works for us because execute and execute global are different functions. But in the original sample, like if we go look at or our server one, it just calls execute on that return value. So let's try that. Cross our fingers. No. Oh, what are you whining about? Is it because it's just that? No, 19? No, it is, it is, it is. Let me just get, hey. So I think we need dim stage two on the line above that. How about that? There we go. So we W script that out. Now we want to execute that, correct? And hopefully my execute global previous nerf function will get in the way of it. And all we'll see is please subscribe. That's the hope. <gasps> yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I never, I haven't done that before. I think that's kind of slick. Okay, so what this means is that we can have it naturally unravel with those weird characters to just display the variable on the parameter that is passed in. So rather than execute global to eval and run those next stage, now we got this little workaround. Do it. Yeah. Oh, that's so slick. Okay, let me redirect that to third.vbs. Um, and let's go ahead and open up our third.vbs. Oh, you... It's friggin' Houdini rat crap. We've seen this before. I mean, I should have known. It's like the WSH rat. Oh, what a bummer. What a, what a lame way to finally get to the end here where it's just a, another sample that we've seen before. Sure, cool, we got new indicators of compromise. Another domain, another port. I should have expected this considering it is Visual Basic scripts. This is a rat. This is WSH rat. We see it all the time. You see it all the time. We've, we've done this before in previous videos where we can dive into Lakota as to what this is all doing and how it works. But it's just, it's just that. The question is, would this even execute because of those original errors that we were seeing at the start of this, trying to read win management's root SIMB2 or any, any of the other w, WMIC and WMI classes and SIM instances? Like, I don't think it would end up, I don't know if it would end up executing. Maybe it was tampered with, maybe it's, multi, maybe it's manipulated in some cases, but this is the only persistence that we, what we see on the machine. Uh, ultimately, Remote Access Trojan is a rat, WSH rat. Recoder Houdini is still doing his thing. But kind of a lame way to wrap up and end the video because this is something that we've seen before. And it's lame, cheesy, more visual basic script code. Should have known, should have expected. But hey, maybe that nice little trick of clobbering the execute global function or any other function that you might be able to need to have in some nested way, that could still be worthwhile. And now we've at least diagnosed that this is what we're up against. Um, 
It doesn't tell us any of their hooks and claws other than what might be in temp. So maybe on that host, we'd go ahead and clean out and scrub that temp. But ultimately, we're good. And I think that's the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Again, I always feel bad doing some of these when it's just a re-roll of something that we've already seen before. But maybe there's still a little bit of cool new learnings or you just have fun seeing me bang my head against the wall against semantics and syntax of Visual Basic Script. Um, I recommend folks, hey, bump around in Remnux, bump around in Flare. You should kind of be tinkering in those. And if you're, you know, experimenting and exploring some things, you're probably more lead and more advanced than me, cutting things together in like Ida and actually disassembling actual binds binaries, but I figured these sort of videos, when it is at least semi-human readable language, it's something that other people for a larger audience can understand and interpret and, and sort of make sense of rather than just raw Intel assembly op codes, right? Whatever. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you did, please do all those YouTube algorithm things. Uh, I've got to decide if I even upload this, but maybe we'll see how we do. Please do those YouTube algorithm things. Like, comment, subscribe. Blah, 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 blah. End of video. Bleh. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. See you later.